Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our 2013 NFL Mock Draft Special. This is our March edition of the Mock Draft, and this one will only be previewing the first round. So let's get the video kicked off by starting with the number one overall selection, the Kansas City Chiefs. And you know you can't have a football game plan mock without some mock draft rules. And this one, we're giving props to the small school guys that have a lot of NFL potential. And then my regular March mock draft will immediately follow this one. Now that they have Alex Smith, you can look at the offensive line. Teron Armstead out of Arkansas Pine Bluff makes a lot of sense for the Chiefs. This guy is a supreme athlete, can play left or right tackle, but I think he's better suited to be on the inside as a guard. You can do a lot of great things with a guy like Armstead on your offensive line. The Jags add pass rushing ability with David Boss out of Missouri Western. This guy was an outstanding edge rusher. May even have some ability to stand up and play an outside linebacker in certain fronts. So you can get creative with a guy like Boss on your defense. I think he's going to be an outstanding player at the next level. You want to talk about a space eater. You look at Brandon Williams out of Missouri Southern State. This guy is 6'2", 328 outstanding interior pressure and you add that to that Raiders defensive front I think they'll have a great chance of being successful in 2013. Former Tennessee Volunteers defensive tackle Monterey Hughes lands in an outstanding spot right here with the Philadelphia Eagles who've just released Cullen Jenkins and also Mike Patterson so I think this is a great fit and also brings a talented player to the city of brotherly love. The Lions need help in the secondary, so I think Robert Alford out of southeastern Louisiana makes a lot of sense right here. Not only can he help these guys out in the secondary, he also is an outstanding returner, so you get two players for the price of one. So in my opinion, Robert Alford will be able to fill two needs for the Detroit Lions. I'm a big fan of Keith Pugh out of Howard. I think this guy is the best FCS linebacker in this draft, a small college linebacker. 6'2", 235, can play on the outside, can play on the inside. So the Cleveland Browns get a guy with tremendous versatility to add to their new 3-4 defense. I'm a big fan of Ross Dawson out of CSU Pueblo, 6'4", 232 pounds, a guy that can make all the throws, and he fills a need for the Arizona Cardinals. We know they had spotty quarterback play. They can go offensive line, but when you add a guy of the caliber of Dawson, I think that can instantly make any offensive line look better. The Bills continue to add explosive playmakers to their offense. Derek Rogers out of Tennessee Tech, the former Tennessee volunteer, reminds me a lot of Anquan Bolden, 6'3", 215 pounds. You put this guy on that offense and you team him up with C.J. Spiller and company, and now no one will want to face the Buffalo Bills in 2013. The Jets have all kind of needs on offense. I think they start with their offensive line. You look at J.C. Treader out of Cornell. This guy is 6'4", 300 pounds, played left tackle at Cornell. You see right here is an outstanding run blocker, which leads me to believe this guy's home at the National Football League level will be at guard so the Jets are able to bolster their offensive front. The Titans need help at safety, and I think Rontez Miles has a lot of skills like Le'Ron Landry, a guy that can hit and also has coverage ability, maybe a little bit better in coverage than Le'Ron Landry. So I think this guy, when you add up all of his attributes, will give you a very explosive playmaker in the back end of your defense. Manace Fakedi was a former left tackle at Kansas State, transferred to West Texas A&M where he excelled as well, 6'5", 320, Good footwork, so I think he can also help out that Chargers offensive line. Big fan of Brandon Kaufman. You look at a guy that's 6'5", 215 pounds, does a great job with this route running, and we know how much they need help at the receiver position for the Miami Dolphins. You give Ryan Tannehill every chance to be successful. I think Kaufman can do a great job down there in South Florida. Big fan of Dak Swanson out of Sam Houston State. Had an outstanding career for the Bearcats. I think this fits a need perfectly for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who are looking to add depth and talent in their secondary.
The Panthers need help on the interior, and Brent Russell, defensive tackle out of Georgia Southern, was a three-time All-American. This guy was a nuisance for teams in the Southern Conference, and I think he could carry that over to the National Football League. The Saints need to be able to get pressure on a quarterback in the new 3-4 defense. Ty Powell out of Harding, a guy that can play defensive end, outside linebacker, and even inside backer, so he gives you that versatility that you want in that defense. The Rams add one of the more polished playmakers coming out of the FCS ranks at the receiver position. Aaron Millette is a guy that will fit nicely in that offense for St. Louis and giving Sam Bradford another target to throw to. Pittsburgh may lose Mike Wallace, but they add a guy in Jasper Collins out of Mount Union. A polished wide receiver at the Division III level was very productive, and a guy that's faster than what his time will say in the 40, and also a lot tougher than his size may suggest at 180 pounds. Garrett Gilkey had an outstanding senior bowl week, and I think this guy is an excellent fit for that Cowboys offensive front. They have to get better in order to keep Tony Romo well protected. The Giants add depth on their defensive front with Nicholas Williams out of Sanford. This guy was a disruptive force as well in the Southern Conference, just like Brent Russell. I like this guy a lot. I think he's going to have an excellent career at the next level. Jay Cutler needs a tight end that he can depend on, and Kyle Usick out of Harvard is one of the best tight ends I've seen in the draft, regardless of division. A guy that can be an H-back and also a tight end, so look for him to add versatility to that Bears offense. Tremendous player coming out of Harvard. Mike Catapano out of Princeton dominated the Ivy League competition. Coming off the edge was a disruptive force. And this is a guy that can also line up as an outside linebacker. Has a lot of David Pollock-like ability. I think he fits perfect in that Bengals defensive front. The Rams add help in the secondary with J.J. Wilcox, a guy that was also a former running back, so the athleticism is there. He can also help you out on the returns, but this is a guy that can also match up very well versus tight ends. The Vikings have to add receiving weapons if they want to take the next step as an offense, and Ryan Spadola out of Lehigh caught everything thrown his way. This guy has the body control that you want at that position to contort his body in different ways to catch a pass. That's why I like Spadola at this spot for the Vikings. Losing the White Freeney means the Colts have to find someone to get after the quarterback, and Nate Palmer was one of the best pass rushers at the FCS level, 6'3", 240, coming out of Illinois State. I think adding Roger Gaines out of Tennessee State helps solidify that right side of the offensive line for the Seattle Seahawks and gives Russell Wilson more time to find targets deep down the field. I really believe the Packers would be virtually unbeatable if they added a threat out of the backfield. And I think Miguel Masonette out of Stony Brook gives them that. This is a guy that had a tremendous career for the Seawolves, and I think he can do great things at the next level. The Texans add a little bit more firepower to that defense with Brandon Hepburn out of Florida A&M. 6'3", 240, tremendous speed and athleticism, and that complements Brian Cushing very well. The Broncos need help on their defensive line, and Jarrett Smith is a guy that's a defensive tackle that has pass rushing ability, was able to dominate the CAA competition, and also had a great week with the step up in competition at the Texas versus the Nation game. The Patriots add help in the secondary with Malcolm Bronson out of McNeese State, a guy that's a free safety but plays like a strong. So I think that right there gives you that versatility in the back end that you want. Ferocious hitter, a guy that also has underrated ball skills. With the retirement of Tony Gonzalez, the Falcons will be in the market for a tight end. And when you look at Brian Leonhardt out of Bemidji State, 6'5", 240, this young man is always open. Even when he's covered, he's open. Throw the football his way, and with this soft hands, he will always come down with the reception. 
the word Armani means athleticism in football terms, and that's what Armani Bryant brings to the table. 6'4", 263 pounds, a guy that uses his hands very well to consistently beat offensive tackles. And when you add those type of edge rushers in a 3-4 defense, that's how you stay healthy, and that's how you stay aggressive. There's a big hole in the Ravens defense in the middle with the retirement of Ray Lewis. So you add Jeremy Kimbrough out of Appalachian State, 5'9", 235 pounds, plays a game like London Fletcher. I like what he brings to the table. Also very underrated in pass coverage. The Redskins need help at the safety position, and there's a lot to like about Jordan Dangerfield out of Townsend. Two-time All-American in 2011 and 2012 has the range and the playmaking ability you want out of a guy protecting the back end. Now here's my official March mock draft. When you look at the top 16, some guys that stand out to me that had that should have an immediate impact. You look at the Raiders getting D. Milner. They need help in the secondary. I think that's a great fit for that ball club and the Lions are able to get Demontre Moore. I don't care what people say about what happened at the combine. Every time I watch film, this guy is always making impactful plays in the backfield. And when you look down at the Saints getting Xavier Rose, I think that's a style of cornerback that fits in that Rob Ryan attack style 3-4 defense. You need big and physical corners and I think Rose would make a great fit in that Saints secondary. I think the Pittsburgh Steelers at number 17 have to go with Justin Hunter, who brings to the table a lot of A.J. Green-like ability, and they need a bigger wide receiver to go along with the talented trio they already have on the roster. The Bears are a perfect fit for Manti Teo, as well as Barcavius Mingo going to the Bengals. I'm not sold on him as a 3-4 edge rusher. I think as an outside linebacker, he makes a great fit in that Bengals defense. And we look down at the Patriots taking David Amerson, a guy that can play free safety, also has the ball hawking skills, and that's something they need in the secondary. The Falcons get Tyler Eifert out of Notre Dame. The Tone Jones is a guy that can play any position on the defensive line. The Rich get richer with the 49ers. I think he'll make a great fit as the five technique. And I do believe the Ravens pull the trigger on Tyron Matthew, the talented defensive back out of LSU. And the Redskins in the second round getting Phillip Thomas, a guy that's a free safety, a ball hawking free safety. It makes a lot of sense for them on the back end of their defense. And you want to keep it locked in here to football game plan throughout the course of draft season as our senior draft analyst Chris James does a great job breaking down the prospects on his radio show every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time at blogtalkradio.com slash football game plan. And you can also follow him on Twitter at CJFloorda9.